Hello, church family and friends. I hope you are doing well, keeping safe, and trusting God is in control and you are loved. Welcome to our second session of the One Month to Live weekly online Bible study. I hope you are reading every day one chapter of this devotional book. Today, you should be reading the, the day 11 with the title Everest scaling the obstacle to unity. So far, the reading has been great, and today's lesson will be a blessing too. Now, let us pray, asking God for His blessing, as we will be watching the session that will teach us God's Word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this opportunity. Even though we are not together in the same place, we are united by your Spirit that is in us through the faith in Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing. Help us to understand what you want us to teach. Help us to put in practice your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, be ready to watch today's lesson. Hey guys, welcome back. We are so glad you're here for the One Month to Live journey and can't wait to hear your stories about the exciting things that are happening in your life as you're making changes. And Carrie and I wanted to talk to you today for just a few minutes before you get started in your discussion about the second principle in the One Month to Live lifestyle, and that is to love completely. Now, loving completely is radical. It's a radical idea. It's a radical way to live, a radical way to love, because usually we love very conditionally. I'll love you if you love me. I will give to you if you give to me. I will forgive you if you forgive me. But loving completely means loving with abandon. It means loving like God, no matter what the other person does. And it's tough. It's a hard way to live uh, when you get started because it feels uncomfortable. It feels like, wait, I'm not getting the response I wanted from people. But yet, very quickly, you'll see that God will fill that place in your heart and help you identify with Him as you love others completely. Now, what does that mean practically? How do you love completely? Well, the best, most succinct way that we found to express it is it means do it now. Say it now. Whatever it is that God has placed in your heart that you need to do, don't wait till your final days. You know, much of this book came out of our experience in ministry because being uh, as ministers, pastors of a church, we're invited very often to be at the bedside of people when they only had days or weeks, hours to live. And we found that many, many people express deep regret over their lives and the things that they wished they would have done, the things they wished they would have said were foremost on their minds. And we thought, well, if this is how it ends, if this is truly how it ends, then why not do it now? Why wait till the end? And so if there are people that you need to forgive or ask forgiveness from, now's the time to do it. If you need to express love for someone, do it now, don't wait till your very last days. Because we don't know when our last days are, but God does. And so we're going to explore a little more of how to love completely. I know, Chris, we've seen with so many people who've gone through the One Month to Live Challenge that it all comes down to forgiveness. Because when you think about, if I really only have one month left to live and I'm gonna go meet my maker, I wanna be right with everyone. And there's just something about that thought that turns you to forgiveness, and that's so important. So we've heard so many stories of amazing forgiveness, supernatural forgiveness that only God can do. I want to read to you from Matthew 18, beginning with verse 21, from the message paraphrase. At that point, Peter got up the nerve to ask Jesus, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister 
who hurts me, seven? And Jesus replied, seven, hardly. Try 70 times seven. The kingdom of God is like a king who decided to square accounts with his servants. As he got underway, one servant was brought before him who had run up a debt of $100,000. He couldn't pay up. So the king ordered the man along with his wife, children and goods to be auctioned off at the slave market. The poor wretch threw himself at the king's feet and begged, give me a chance and I'll pay it all back. Touched by his plea, the king let him off, erasing the entire debt. The servant was no sooner out of the room when he came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him $10. He seized him by the throat and demanded, pay up now. The poor wretch threw himself down and begged, give me a chance and I'll pay it all back. But he wouldn't do it. He had him arrested and put in jail until the debt was paid. When the other servants saw this going on, they were outraged and brought a detailed report back to the king. The king summoned the man and said, you evil servant. I forgave your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you be compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked for mercy? What a powerful parable Jesus told here about forgiveness. And it all started with Simon Peter asking the question, how many times should I forgive someone when they hurt me? And Simon Peter thought he was given a really deep spiritual answer when he said seven times. And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. And of course, that just blew away the disciples. They couldn't believe it. And they're, how do we do that? 70 times seven, what was Jesus saying? He was saying, every time you're hurt, you're to forgive. Every time, because first, forgiveness is a choice. It's not about how you feel. We never feel like forgiving when we're wronged, when we're hurt. But we have to forgive for our own sake. Because if you don't forgive, then that unforgiveness turns into bitterness and it destroys your life. I know people who are bitter from something that happened 20 years ago and they're letting it totally destroy their life today. And they're bitter from someone who hurt them that's no longer even here many times, but they still allow them to hurt them today. And so you forgive for your own sake. And it's a choice that you cannot you know, work up Forgiveness, you just have to choose to do it. And he was saying, every time the hurt comes to your mind, say, God, I choose to forgive. Uh, But forgiveness is not just acting like it was no big deal. You know, a lot of people think, well, okay, I forgive you. I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to forgive you. No big deal. No, forgiveness is saying it was a huge deal. You hurt me deeply. But I choose, even though I don't feel like it, to forgive. That's what forgiveness is all about. And only God can give you the power to do that. And I love how Jesus tells this amazing parable of forgiveness and and brings it right home as he talks about a man who was forgiven greatly but then couldn't forgive others. And if you're having trouble forgiving others, if there is a hurt, a wound in your past that you just seem unable to get through, to get to the other side on, then I encourage you to ask yourself this. Could it be that you're struggling to forgive others because you've never really experienced for yourself God's forgiveness? You know, we can't give what we haven't received. And the truth is that all of us have messed up. We've all sinned, the Bible says. But God forgives us. His forgiveness is available to you. All we need to do is ask just to admit, God, what happened was wrong. I agree with your version of the story, God, that my part was wrong, and I ask you to forgive me. And repentance means turning the other direction, just saying, I'm I'm going the other way now. Experiencing God's forgiveness will unlock the door for you to be able to forgive others. And then there's another part of loving completely, and that is gratefulness. Being thankful, expressing gratitude. Often at the end of people's lives, that's another thing that they wish they would have done, another regret that many, many people have, is the people that they wish they would have thanked. The people that they wish they would have gone back and said, wow, this made such a difference in my life. But life got busy and I never took the time to tell you. If you're ever going to write a letter, do it now. 
One of the great things about the age of technology is that a handwritten letter will give you so much mileage. It means so much. I mean, when you open your mail in the mailbox, how much of it is actually a handwritten letter to you? I bet those are the ones you open first. If it looks like someone's actually written your name on an envelope that someone might have actually addressed something to you. Now, there's nothing wrong with email, text, phone calls. Those are all great. But taking the time to think through what you want to say to that person, writing it down and giving it to them in a format that they're able to actually reread and spend time on is priceless. So that's something I consider, uh, you know, I consider doing whenever I really want to communicate with someone. And I would encourage you to consider the same thing. But take the time to ask for forgiveness, to be grateful to others, and discover what just those small differences can make in your life and have such a huge impact in the way that you live moving forward. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. I thank you so much that you showed us how to live. In your 33 years here on this earth, Lord, you lived passionately and you loved completely. And Lord, we just pray right now that you would help us make a commitment to love completely too. Mm -hmm. Love you with all our heart and to love others in our lives, Lord, completely. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our One Month to Live Challenge, how you're changing so many lives, how we're hearing from so many people who you've made such a difference in their life. And I know a lot of it comes down to forgiveness. So I pray today that you would help us, Lord, choose to forgive those who've hurt us and that we would keep receiving your forgiveness, knowing, Lord, that it's in your hands. And we just thank you that and I know, Lord, I'm praying for some folks who've been hurt so deeply. And maybe they're thinking, you don't understand how much I've been hurt and what someone did to me. Maybe it was abuse in the past. You know, Lord, just I pray right now that you give them the power to choose to forgive for their own sake. And I know it doesn't let the person off the hook, Lord, because you deal with sin, Lord. And, and you, you'll make all things right one day. And I just pray that you would just bring healing over everyone's heart and life. Bring healing to us as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. What a great lesson again. May we put in practice all that we have learned in today's teaching. I want to invite you especially for Sunday, our worship service at 10 a.m. at North Modesto Church of God on 1918 Sherwood Avenue. Sunday at 10 a.m. All ages are welcome and hope to see you next Wednesday for another session of the One Month to Live campaign. Have a great and a blessed week.